welcome to On the Edge with J.P. Divine from Central Maine Sunday. On the Edge with J.P. Divine Audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for listening and supporting local journalism in Central Maine. Now here's J.P. Divine. Bob all black sheep. Well, there's one in every family, they say. This is a lyric in every song sung by family down the ages. What? In my personal family, the loud, shouting, singing, dancing Irish family on Minnesota Avenue, not a Christmas or Thanksgiving, birthday, wedding, or when went by without someone with a glass in their hand, retelling for the 100th time a dusty old story about one or all of us since we got off the boat. Finally, this one lurid story emerges as yet again. It's one I brought to these papers before, but dropped because there was no evidence that this Eddie Devine, the gangster no one thought was credible, was in any way related to our crazy bunch at all. Now, thanks to the ongoing efforts of my nephew, Dr. Kevin Devine, who has almost professionally combed the closets of the past, we have finally unearthed the whole story. It has the fever and haunting flavor of a Warner Brothers movie with bloodlines leading directly up to this weary writer. And it would be one with the help of Dr. Kevin if the Warner Brothers were still in the business of making old gang-busting tales. Sadly, they were not. Here, for your entertainment, is the storyline. Ripped from the headlines of the St. Louis Papers of the Roaring Twenties, I bring it to you in the original language of the times when Dr. Kevin has unearthed the torrid crime-ridden neighborhoods of the Roaring Twenties, a gaggle of kids in front of 2134 Franklin Avenue playing ball with torn equipment, I imagine, heard gunshots from a nearby alley and saw two men running away. This is from the police report, torn from their reports given to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Yes, sir. The kids breathlessly said the men both were short and stout. The chief difference in their opinion being that one wore a light suit and the other a dark suit. And, oh, and they were bareheaded. It seems... Oh, yes, and and that a hat was found at the crime scene where the body of the famous gangster Eddie Devine was found in the alley. A bullet wound in the back of his head. He was dead. He had a more prosperous appearance than some of his fellow gangsters, and he was wearing a tailor-made suit when killed. His body was not recognized until Sam Lazarus, a tailor, declared that he recognized him. His brother Matt Devine, my um, uh, great-uncle, later identified the body positively, romantically. A stamp photograph of a young girl was found in Devine's pocket. There was also a pawn ticket. For a ring. Divine, it seems, had been arrested the previous April with Skippy Rahan on a pickpocketing charge, but after Rahan pleaded guilty, the charge against Divine was um, not pressed. Eddie Divine was 23 years old and lived at 2230 Broadway. Roll the credits. Roll the cast. Blackout. Thanks for listening to On the Edge with J.P. Divine. On the Edge with J.P. Divine Audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for supporting local journalism in Central Maine.